You are watching the Sunday Motivational Video, 15 Rules of Money. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Hello Aluxers, we're back with one of the most exciting videos we've made in a while. This is going to be your favorite video for the year, so hit that like button right now, and if by the end of the video we don't deliver on this promise, feel free to take it back. Money. Some people say it makes the world go round. Some people chase it tirelessly like a hamster running on a wheel. Some people speak about money, and others actually have it. Money doesn't care about your self-esteem, about your religion, about where you live or what your goals are. Money just is. You either have it or you don't. You're either making money or you're spending money. What some of you might not know before this video is that money behaves like a force in society. It follows certain rules, certain laws that govern the creation and flow of capital. Today, we're sharing with you 15 rules of money that will change how you look at wealth. Please take notes because this is going to be the most valuable investment you can make in yourself today, and we have to congratulate you for taking the time. Without further ado, let's get started. Rule number one, money doesn't change people. It shows who they really are. Think of money like a magnifying glass. Whatever traits lay hidden before are now 10 times bigger and people can now notice them. The same magnifying glass lights that initial spark that awakens these traits that were dormant before. If you were an asshole before and then you got rich, you're now just an asshole who's got a larger bank account. The other side of the coin is also valid. If you were humble and generous before, nothing's going to change when you make it. Money also acts like gasoline. It makes the fire bigger. It allows you to move quicker, to learn faster. It grants access to more tools, toys, and resources. It all depends on who you are and where you want to channel its force. Money doesn't change people. It strips away the vulnerability of being poor and gives them the platform to be as they really are. Rule number two, never spend money before you earn it. If you always want to be poor, keep spending money you haven't earned yet. This is the main reason why most people never escape poverty. They borrow money to buy things they don't actually need or can't really afford. So whose fault is this? Some say the media, who's aggressively marketing products to these vulnerable individuals, promising happiness and the respect of your peers. Others say it's an education issue, that nobody teaches you these things. But actually, it's a personal thing. When you're maxing out a credit card to buy a new TV, you know what kind of choice you're making. You know it's not a smart purchase, despite the TV being smart. It's because of vanity. You are sacrificing your future at the expense of your present. People overspend on things they can't actually afford, and that's why they'll never break the cycle. They're playing catch up with the present, so there isn't enough time to move into the future. Rule number three, don't chase money. Instead, be a money magnet. We know this rule sounds super cheesy like some kind of law of attraction bullshit, but it's not. It's actually a lot deeper than positive thoughts and the universe delivering your ideal life to you. This rule can be broken down into two halves. The first part, don't chase money. This means you're always behind money running toward it. The fact you don't have money is because you're stuck on this rat race, this hamster wheel that you're not going anywhere on. As long as you're chasing it, money will keep running away from you. You're the coyote and the money is the roadrunner. Nobody likes to be chased and caught, so you best believe it'll always run away from you when it sees you coming. 
The second part is about attracting money, which means becoming valuable enough by yourself that money comes to you because of your skills and aptitude. Let us explain. The more valuable you become as an individual, the more people will want you to solve problems for them. They will gladly run after money and bring it to you if you can help them out. This is the fundamental difference between consumers of value and creators of value. One spends money while the other receives money. The more valuable you become, the more money you'll receive. Rule number four, invest time before you invest money. This is the main thing holding people back from starting. A common belief of the average person is you need money to make money. What these people never learned is that time is more valuable than money. And early on, you've got an abundance of time you're most likely throwing away. No matter when you start, it will still take you on average seven years to build a business, 10 if you're not as smart, and five if you've already got some money to begin with. But time is still a requirement. The sooner you start, the sooner you'll get there. You're smart. You chose to invest a couple of minutes of your Sunday's precious time with us, and we could not be more grateful. You're already learning so much from resources such as Alux, but you need to get your hands dirty. You need to be in the field, whatever the field is for you, real life or digitally. It's shocking to us how people can't find two hours a day to work on their side project, but they binge watch Netflix or lose thousands of hours lost in video games. If you're not rich, it's not because you don't have money, it's because you're investing your time poorly. Rule number five, the more you learn, the more you earn. Here's a very important distinction we have to make when it comes to learning. Learning for us is about acquiring knowledge that can be transformed into value in your life and in the lives of others. That's what learning is. Nobody cares if you know all the Pokemon or the 38th digit of Pi, you dork. It's not valuable. Life is not a trivia show. Knowledge that doesn't have the potential to be manifested is not knowledge. It's trivia. Focus your learning on building a ladder for yourself to get out of this hole of mediocrity most of us begin our journeys in. Learn how to build each step and then follow through with the execution. If your parents built a ladder for you, then use it. If other people have documented how ladders are built, study them. We're all dealt different hands in this game of life. Maybe some holes are deeper than others, but the way out is almost always the same. Learn, build, escape, enjoy, teach others. If you're looking to make money, you need to learn how money is made. You need to practice making money until you get really good at it, in the same way you would learn to play guitar. Put enough time into it and at some point, you'll stop sounding like shit. Put some more time in and you'll even be good at it. Every skill in life follows this principle. First you learn, then you remove the L. If you're serious about changing your life, you need to start learning the fundamentals and then build on them. Lucky for you, there's a boatload of resources available for you to learn whatever your reality requires. If we had to recommend you a place to start, read The Richest Man in Babylon, take notes and then read it once more, wait a year and then read it again, then again the following year. You can literally finish it in one sitting and this book alone is enough for you to begin your journey. Even better, go to alux.com slash free book and sign up. If you do, you can get this audiobook version for free thanks to our friends at Audible. Congratulations because you're living in the best time to learn there ever was. Education is free. All you have to do is reach for it and use it. Rule number six, never be a slave to money, become the master. And there goes our monetization for this video. 
Hey mainstream media, Alox is over here talking about slaves again. Nobody wants to be a slave, yet the way society works, we're enslaving ourselves. We've invented this amazing tool called debt. Some people use it to set themselves free, while others lose even the freedom they had to begin with. Bad debt is just the latest form of slavery. The moment you borrow money, for whatever reason, your life is no longer yours. It belongs to the creditors, to the people who loaned you the money. You'll literally have to trade hours of your life in order for the proceeds of that work to go to someone else. If that's not slavery, we don't know what is. Money is always floating in between. You either own money or money owns you. Your only goal is to be the master of money because the alternative is just terrible. Once you do, money will work for you. It will grow and keep you safe. Rule number seven, you have to seduce money. Don't let money seduce you. This is an extension to rule number six. Money is slippery, it has tricks and can be dangerous because of its potential. In the same way a knife in the hands of a professional sushi chef is a loyal servant, but in the hands of a child, the knife becomes dangerous. Money has the appeal of showing you everything you can do with it, all that is possible, and it's easy to fall prey to its charms, because who wouldn't want to fulfill their fantasies? But that's exactly how money escapes from you. The moment you give in, that's when you open the door and money slips away. You've seen it numerous times with people who won incredible fortunes and ended up broke and miserable just a few years later. Our channel is filled with examples of people whose life was ruined by an influx of money because they had no idea how to control it, how to master it. Don't let money seduce you and see it for what it actually is, a tool. Rule number eight. Money doesn't grow on trees unless you plant the right seeds. For some reason, people are only familiar with the first half of the rule. Everybody who's ever planted an apple tree knows what it takes to get to enjoy the apples. You first need to find the seed, then the right soil, water it, nurture it, take care of it, protect it from external forces, give it enough time, enough sunshine and attention, and you'll eventually get to eat your apples. This is exactly the same way you build a fortune. You've never planted the right seeds and never went through the process. That's why you don't have your own money tree. In the real world, we call these investments or businesses. Even the tallest tree started out as a seed. But seeds by themselves don't grow into beautiful apple trees. If you leave it on a shelf by itself, it will never develop. These seeds that we're speaking of are ideas. The world is filled with seeds, and the best thing is, they're free. Ideas are free. If you click in the top right corner, we have a list of 15 ideas that can make you a million dollars. We gave those away because it's not the seed that grows into the tree. It's the gardener who takes the seed and turns it into something valuable. You are the gardener. The seeds are ideas. Your money tree is what you do with these ideas and if you're willing to put in the time to grow them. Every person who's ever built anything knows this didn't happen overnight. The sooner you plant this seed and begin nurturing it, the sooner you can eat those damn apples. Rule number nine, don't let money get bored. Money hates getting bored. It hates it so much it usually either dies off or flees to someone else who knows what to do with it. Money is kind of like a mako shark. It has to keep swimming if it wants to stay alive. Money loses value when it sits and grows in value when it's used. Here's something you're probably unaware of. If you had $50,000 and put it under your bed for 10 years, 
At the end of the trial, your $50,000 would be worth approximately $30,000 in real marketplace value. This happens because of inflation, the rise of property prices, developments, the cost of living increases, etc. That's the cost of letting money get bored. Put enough money aside for a rainy day and have it protected from inflation. Everything else, use it to fortify your castle. Build things. Grow things. Use the money for what it's meant to be used for. Rule number 10. Spend less than you earn. We know this sounds obvious, but we still can't believe just how many people break this fundamental rule. There's a large population who just doesn't care about the reason. They credit card everything, and there's an even larger portion of this population who spends everything they earn. The first ones are already drowning. The second ones are one wave away from joining them. Your inability to control your thirst for spending is the reason why you don't feel like your life is moving forward. These people get seduced by money. They enslave themselves with bad debt. They let their pride and emotions take control of their spending. All debt is inevitably paid back with interest. If you can't afford to buy it now, you can't afford to buy it with interest on top. If you're one of those people who don't like to budget things because it makes them feel cheap, it's okay as long as you still obey the full rule. You can either spend less or earn more. The choice is yours. There's nothing wrong with enjoying an opulent lifestyle, as long as you make sure you're bringing in an excess of capital and that at least some on that income is going to your personal safety net. You know, the thing you fall back on if you get into a car crash tomorrow and can't work for the next six months. In our experience, there are two kinds of people. The ones who love to optimize and budget, and those who want to play it big. Both of them can get rich. For those of you looking for the slow and sure way to wealth, go buy Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. For those who would rather risk it all for the big return, go buy The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. You can use the alux.com slash free book URL to get one of these free books thanks to Audible if you've already read The Richest Man in Babylon. Rule number 11. Money is your personal army. It should go out and bring back prisoners. Billionaire investor Kevin O'Leary kept pushing this metaphor and now it's something we've incorporated into the way we think about money. Every dollar you have is your personal soldier. Every morning you send them out onto the battlefield. Some will die, some will conquer. Your goal is for more of them to return back home with prisoners. If you start thinking about your freedom soldiers, you'll begin to be a lot more careful of the troops you give away when someone asks to borrow some of your soldiers. Every time you give someone money, you run the risk of this person killing your soldiers and never seeing them again. Soldiers that would have served you well. Rule number 12. The right partner can make you rich. The wrong partner can make you poor. Some of you questioned why we dedicated the last two Sundays to making videos about things to look for in a partner, asking us what does this have to do with money. You'll never understand just how expensive it is to be with the wrong person until you are. Expensive not just because divorces are expensive and if you don't know what you're doing they're going to take half of your shit, because the wrong person can hold you down. They're so close to you, they have the power to alter your fate. They can help build your wings for growth, or they can chain you to the ground. We cannot stress enough just how important it is to be with the right person. Someone to call your partner, who's willing to go through this journey we call life together with you. 
You need this person to be strong, competent, and have the same goals and desires as you do for the road ahead of you that will be filled with ups and downs, with hardships, and nobody who isn't fully committed to this journey will be able to push through. Find the right person and life will be a marvelous adventure. Rule number 13. Money will solve all of your money problems. Nothing less, nothing more. For some reason, people expect money to solve every problem out there. It's true, it can solve most of the problems, but certainly not every single one of them. Money is like a universal key, which can open more related locks. Need a roof over your head? Money can solve that. Wondering what you're going to eat tonight? Money's got you covered. Your kids need school supplies? Money to the rescue. These are all money issues. Money works on them. But it's stupid to think that just because you have a key, you can go through a brick wall if there's no door in sight. If you're poor, all you see is money problems. Once you overcome these, you end up realizing that there are other types of problems out there where money has little to no power. Poor people always judge when someone successful commits suicide because that's all they can see, an abundance of money, and how could anybody need anything more than money? However, you cannot expect a rich mindset from poor-minded people. Rule number 14. There are people who have money and then there are people who are wealthy. This is where we get into the finesse side of things. It kind of works like the natural evolution of the previous rule. What does wealth mean? When do you know you're wealthy? For us, wealth is that point in your life where your desires and expectations match your reality. That's when you win, but it's about the winning combination of all pillars in your life. Emotional, intellectual, physical, relationships, and finance. It's pretty much like collecting all the infinity stones of a successful life. Some people are lucky if they get one or two of the five, yet there are some who become actually wealthy. The peculiar thing is that these pillars are connected. It's hard to win at relationships when you're emotionally damaged. It's hard to build your financial empire if your relationship sucks, and so on. This is why you see rich people who are not happy or fulfilled. In their pursuit of financial gain, they forgot all about the other pillars. Rule number 15. Your rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to your contribution. If you've ever questioned why you earn as much as you currently do, it's because of this rule. This is the recipe for calculating how much reward a person should receive. The bigger the contribution, the bigger the reward. If you serve 10 people, your reward will inevitably be smaller than someone who serves a million people. This applies to the poorest person and the richest person. It's the foundation of value. Starting today, you can immediately increase how much money you earn if you just follow this rule. In order to increase your rewards, you need to increase your contribution. You can do this by serving more people, improving the quality of your service, or finding new ways to contribute. This is all there is to it. Write these three things down and go through them every day until you figure out how to apply any of these three to your life, and you'll immediately see a jump in the rewards you receive. Any of these 15 rules we've mentioned are valuable and strong enough to build wealth for those who are not only aware of them, but to put them to good use. We know this was a long video, and that's why we want to take some time once again to congratulate you on the choice you've made today. Thank you for being an Aluxer, for committing to your growth, to your own self-development, and choosing us as your partner in this journey. 
In the comments, there are people just like you, with the same goals and drive to become more, to become better. That's why we're curious to know, which rule sparked the biggest flame inside of yourself? Which one do you treasure the most? Share it with the community in the comments and let's help each other grow. The story continues on Instagram and Twitter, so make sure to follow us there. And of course, since this is such a long video, we weren't really expecting anybody to still be around at this point. So here's a bonus rule for those of you still watching. You've earned it. Rule number 16. Would you rather be tired or broke? It's your choice. We believe this from the bottom of our hearts. Every person can achieve financial success if they choose to stop being lazy. Most people think that being lazy is the opposite of working hard, but that's not quite the truth. If all it took was working hard, then the richest people in the world would be coal miners or the people installing roofs in July. No, being lazy has to do with your mindset, with your choice of picking hard things over convenient things, of choosing to watch Alux instead of some streamer, of reading a self-help book instead of watching reality TV, of sleeping two hours less than your friends so you can work on your project. Not being lazy requires you to sacrifice comfort in the present for the potential of the future. Not being lazy means do the things they're not willing to do today so you can live the way they can't tomorrow. We really hope this bonus made it worth your while today. This is probably the most valuable video we made this year so far, and we're really excited to share it with you. If you watch this thing in its entirety, please write money rules in the comments. We're so genuinely happy to see when the community engages like that. See you in the comments. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos for you to watch next. As always, the conversation continues on social media. Thanks again, and we can't wait to have you back tomorrow.